This section of the course deals with installing Configuration Manager. In this section, we will discuss the prerequisites that must be in place before we can install Configuration Manager. We will then install version 1606, which is the latest base build of the product. Finally, in this section, we will show how to upgrade to version 1610, which is the latest version at the time of recording. This video is titled Configuration Manager Prerequisites. In this video, we will discuss the various configurations that we must carry out before installing Configuration Manager. In previous videos, we discussed the importance of integrating Config Manager with Active Directory. In this video, we will make a start by creating the System Management Container and extending the Active Directory schema. Config Manager requires a database, so we'll spend some time talking about SQL Server. Finally, we'll discuss the Windows ADK and the server roles and features that must be installed before we install Config Manager. So let's begin. First, we will take care of the Active Directory prerequisites. If you want to publish your Configuration Manager site to AD, and it is recommended that you do so, a system management container should be created in each domain that will host a Config Manager primary site server or secondary site server. We manually create the container using the ADSI Edit tool. To do this, you'll need to log on to a domain controller using an account that has the Create All Child Objects permission on the System Container in Active Directory. We'll use a Domain Administrator account in the demo. Then, we grant full control of the container and its child objects to the Site Server Computer account by using Active Directory Users and Computers. We'll see a demo of this shortly. The Active Directory schema defines the structure of the data stored in the directory. Out of the box, AD supports many different types of objects and attributes. Users are an example of objects, and first and last names are an example of attributes. However, sometimes the AD base schema doesn't support all the data you need to store in the directory, like Config Manager specific objects. In these cases, you can extend the schema with custom objects and attributes. So, how do we extend the schema? The Config Manager Media provides us with a tool for this. We'll see this in action in a demo shortly. To extend the schema, we need to log on to the domain with an account that is a member of the Schema Admins Security Group. We don't actually need to log on to a domain controller for this work. Any domain member will be sufficient. Remember to back up the system state on the domain controller before you run the command to extend the schema. As always, that is vital and sensible preparation. Before you start, take a system state backup with your favorite backup solution. This is my domain controller. So if we launch the ADSI edit tool, and connect to the domain using the default options. Right click on system, select new, object, choose container, next. Type system management. Now, Remember, this name is very specific. Please spell it correctly. It's system management, not systems management. And finish the wizard to create the container. Now, launch Active Directory Users and Computers. And we will have to go to View, Advanced Features, in order to see the new container that you've created, which is system management. Now we're going to delegate control to the computer account. So if we right click, delegate control, and continue through the wizard. Next. We're looking for computers. The name of the computer. 
next. Create a custom task to delegate, next. We choose this folder, existing objects in this folder and creation of new objects in this folder. Next, we choose all the options so that we have full control over that container. Next, and finish. So now when Config Manager publishes site information to Active Directory, we will see it in this container. Now let's extend the schema. We'll do this on the domain controller for convenience. However, you don't have to. You can use any domain member as long as the account you're using has schema admin rights. So navigate to the SMS setup bin x64 folder on the config manager media and we're running ext adsch extend ad schema dot exe and let's run that and we'll see the schema being extended successfully extended the schema and let's examine the log file in the root and we can verify that the schema has been extended. Next we have the server prerequisites. First, SQL. Full SQL Server is required for a CAS or primary site installation. Supported versions are from SQL Server 2008 R2 with Service Pack 3 through to SQL Server 2016. Both local and remote SQL installations are supported. I've already locally installed SQL Server Standard 2014 with Service Pack 1 in the lab for this video series. A full discussion of best practice SQL deployments is outside the scope of this course. However, it is important to note that most Config Manager admins recommend having a local installation of SQL. There is no cost associated with this, as it's included with the System Center licensing provided you only use the SQL instance for System Center databases. One other thing of note is that SQL must be installed with a specific collation, which is SQL Latin 1 General CP1 Case Insensitive Accent Sensitive. This is included in the notes of the video. Next are the server features and roles. In general, a site system server must be installed on a 64-bit operating system. Operating systems from Windows Server 2008 with Service Pack 2 are currently supported, although it is recommended to use a later OS version. Support for Windows Server 2008 and 2008 R2 will be removed with the first Config Manager version to be released in 2017. I've used Windows Server 2012 R2 with Service Pack 1 in the lab for the primary site server. We will also be installing a management point and a distribution point on this server. The server roles and features that you need to add depend on which Config Manager roles you are installing. For example, you will need to add features like .NET Framework 3.5 SP1 or later and .NET Framework 4.5.2 and remote differential compression. It's better to refer to the official docs to see which roles and features you need. The site address is included in the notes of this video. And this is the page in the site docs that we need to refer to. We can see the various Windows prerequisites depending on what, what we are deploying. These are the IIS role services for a distribution point, for example. Finally, the Windows Assessment and Deployment Kit, or Windows ADK, is a collection of tools that you can use to customize and deploy Windows operating systems to new computers. It must be installed as it is a prerequisite for a Configuration Manager installation. The ADK download link is included in the notes of this video. And this is going to be our primary site server, and this is the ADK setup file. So let's install the ADK. Uh, we'll choose the default location for the purpose of the video. And next, 
We accept the license terms. Now we need deployment tools. We need Windows PE. We need, this is optional, but good to deploy the imaging and configuration designer. And we need USMT. We don't need the rest. So we need these four and install. This is a fairly long installation as the files have to be downloaded before they're installed. So that's what's happening at the moment. Um, we're acquiring the Windows PE files. And now we're acquiring the USMT installation files. All the required files have been downloaded and we're now installing the deployment tools. The ADK has now been installed. The next video is installing Configuration Manager, where we will demonstrate how to install the product.